Hey folks, 13 and 3 here, into our second season with our guest, Wisconsin Badger Women's Associate Head Coach, Dan Cook. This episode is sponsored by Kelly Heating and Electric, Computer Recovery Associates, Dooley's Pub, and Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Mogi. Hey, great job there, JC, on the intro. Hey, we're here with Coach Cook here at Laban Arena in Madison, Wisconsin, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing what he has to tell us about his hockey journey. Welcome, Coach. Thank you very much. Glad to be here and uh, looking forward to answering your questions and hopefully uh, spreading some interest for the University of Wisconsin Women's Hockey Program. Sounds great. That's what we're hoping to. We've got a laundry list of bullet points we want to talk to you about, but I got to tell you, when Mogi and I were walking up to Laban today, there's signs up, sold out. Are you guys getting that bowl filled for the majority of the games? Uh, here at Laban, we are, yeah, especially the second half. Our schedule is a little uh, inconsistent the first half of the season, but after Christmas, you know, we've been playing uh, mostly Saturday, Sunday afternoons, and that seems to work the best uh, for our program to uh, get the families in here with the younger kids and girls. And uh, it's really exciting for our players to come out and have the UW band here and have the seats full. I can only imagine it's, it's got to be an exciting uh, environment. Uh, here last there. time Mogi and I were here, we got to see a slang, for lack of better <laughs> terms, when you guys were gracious enough to host the UW Eau Claire Blue Gold women's hockey team. And I think there was a lesson learned from the Division Three to the Division One level after yeah. that game. Huge step between those two programs. Yeah, and, and actually this weekend tonight we're playing at uh, the Cole Center. So we're doing fill the bowl tonight, and we uh, it's for a hockey drive. So people are bringing in used equipment uh, to donate items, and currently we have over twelve thousand tickets sold for that game tonight. That's wow. fantastic! Excellent. Yeah, You're close Excellent. to filling that arena yeah. then as well. Good chance. To yeah, that was a welcome. few days ago. We had twelve thousand out. Sure, That's fantastic. Wow. Excellent. Well, let's talk a little bit about you. Born in Madison, Wisconsin, graduate of La Follette High School. How did you get introduced to hockey? Uh, I was about five or six years old. Uh, my dad worked at Oscar Myers and we lived in cross plains. And so he was, uh, he had some friends that he worked with whose sons were playing hockey. So they convinced him to, uh, get me involved. And, uh, the only issue was, uh, we lived in cross plains back then, which seemed like miles and miles away, but it's only about 30 miles away. So he would you know, come back from work and then drive me back over to Hartmeyer. And uh, after a few years of that, he just decided it was time to build a house in Madison. So then we moved over to the east side, and uh, that's how I got into the LaFollette district. But, uh, yeah, a lot of good friends still from those days when I first started. Did you uh, have a family history of hockey, or were you kind of first generation? Yeah, nope, I was the first one. Uh, my dad was a basketball player at Middleton High School, and uh, – I don't even know if he knew what a pair of skates were until he met these people at Oscar Myers. So um, I'm glad he met them, and I'm glad they were able to convince him. And uh, he supported it for a lot of years, uh, driving me and taking me places. As you look back uh, at the start of when you began, thinking about what you wore as equipment back then to what you're giving your players now, quite a change. Oh, definitely. I mean, it was like uh, magazines for shoulder pads back then and uh, uh, heavy too. Like the stuff really retained water back then and sweat. So uh, the poor goalies back then, I think they had the worst of it, but they also had a lot bigger blockers and bigger gloves back then. So uh, some of the stuff's been good or bad, but for the most part, yeah, the things the girls and, and men are wearing today are a lot more comfortable, a lot lighter and more protective. So when you got your first start, did you have some buddies from school that kind of got you interested and you followed uh, followed up the ranks with them? Yeah, so when I came in, uh, we had a. I was very fortunate to have a lot of good youth coaches um, and some of their sons played for our team and uh, I became good friends with them. Uh, we all kind of went through, this was before the AAA programs before, started, so... You really stayed with your group, your age group, you know, for five, six years. And then some at in the district I played in at high school, some kids went to East, some kids went to La Follette. So then that was the only time we split up. But for youth league, for about five, six years, we stayed together. 
still good friends with a lot of them. Actually, my sons are friends with their sons, and some of them played together. So I never ventured too far away for very long, and uh, um, it's uh, it's been a great relationship with the hockey community here. So how about the rivalry games between you and, and did you say, East and La Follette? So you're from the same association, all of a sudden you split, and now you're rivals in high school. What were those games like? Uh, you know, those games were pretty even. Uh, they weren't, you know, I wouldn't say they weren't cheap or anything like that, but it was for bragging rights. So, oh, big time. Yeah, yeah. and then obviously Mass and Memorial was always really good that, you know, I'm with the class with uh, Robbie Andringa and John Bice, and uh, those guys were outstanding, and um, they were our biggest competition back then, um, and we were never able to get over the top with them. They were very successful. Yeah. Great guys. When you were growing up, did you have a favorite player that you liked to watch? You know, I I grew up uh, always being a Badger fan. You know, when I was a squirt, I would sell uh, programs at the Coliseum during the men's game. We'd get in with our jerseys on, and and uh, I remember we would practice at the Shell after the men would get done playing. So that's when uh, Mark Johnson and Mike Eaves and all of them were on there, and uh, you know, me and my buddies, we'd be playing boot hockey over in the corner, and you know, <laughs> some of us were Craig Norridge, some of us were Mark Johnson, Mike Eves, <laughs> and uh, so you know, we really looked up to those guys, and and uh, I guess in the professional ranks, obviously, uh, you know, at that time when I was kind of really getting involved was Wayne Gretzky's, you know, fr- rookie year and things like that, so. I really enjoyed watching the Calgary and uh, Edmonton series as I was growing up, you know, in middle school and high school time. Well, you know, go ahead, Mo. So I heard you mention your, your sons are, are friends with some of the guys that you played with and their sons. So are they hockey players as well? Uh, they were. Okay. Uh, yep. uh, currently, well, my oldest son is 26 right now, and uh, he played – at Shattuck St. Mary's uh, through his high school career, and then he went out to Providence. He played one year at St. Mary's University and then went to Providence for school and played on the club team. Uh, he's currently playing in an outdoor tournament with some of his old friends this week. He's back from Chicago where he's going to grad school, and uh, they're up at Sand Valley, the golf course, playing in an outdoor tournament with some of those friends. So, Actually, uh, we've, we've done some advertising for that, so the Sand Valley Classic. Oh, is uh, they, that what it's called? Out to yeah, us. Yeah. yeah. So we've done a couple of shout-outs for those guys that tournament's starting right, right now. It's yeah, I think they had Sunday. the noon game today okay. against the Sandbox team or whatever. So, <laughs> yeah, and so Connor, like, you know, he played with these kids through youth league, went to high school at Shattuck, but he still has maintained some friendships with them, and uh, – uh, they asked him to come up and play, so he's up there doing that. Uh, my middle son, Jacob, uh, he played until his Bantam year, um, and then uh, he got into the arts and photography and, and film and different things like that while he was in high school. And then my youngest son, Malik, uh, he also played at Shattuck. Uh, his U14 team won nationals there, cool. and then uh, – he has since just been working. He hasn't playing anymore, but uh, he's 22 years old. Nice. nice. Excellent. When did you get the pull to go from player to coach? You know, again, going back to uh, being fortunate enough to have some really good coaches, I thought some of the parents that were our coaches, usually that's not a good thing, but we had some really good coaches. Uh, I always – Figured I was going to, as I got older, going through high school, I was going to be a teacher and a high school coach. That was going to be my goal. Uh, I was looking forward to uh, working with a high school team and still being involved in hockey. Um, so that was the direction, I, my path that I was kind of leading myself down to. And you did that? I did that, yeah. So you actually spent some time teaching third graders in lacrosse. Yeah. So, do you miss your days in the classroom? Uh, from what I'm hearing now, uh, not too much. Uh, was that kind of like hurting cats? Or? Uh, you know, third grade was a great. I, that was the. I think I spent three years teaching third grade, two years teaching uh, second grade, and one year teaching first. And and first, let me tell you that those teachers need a lot more pay. That is hurting cats. <laughs> Yeah. That is, yeah. you spend a lot of time uh, tying shoes, zipping up coats, blowing noses. Um, 
and then you feel the pressure of trying to making sure they're you know learning their math and and learning the spelling and it's just a lot of pressure. It's not kindergarten; it's first grade, and you have to prepare them for second or third grade. But yeah, start showing some progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, and then they're used to half days back then, and now they're in full days, and there's no more naps. And so <laughs> <laughs> it was a really tr- tough transition for them. But uh, you know, I take a lot from that experience into my coaching. Uh, and then as I was in the cross, um, I was able to get the high school job there for a few years. So I was. Uh, Fortunate enough, to, uh, the program was, you know, not doing very well. I, I was fortunate enough to get Matt and A.J. Dagenhart back then. And, yeah. you know, uh, A.J. had a good career down here with the Badgers, won a national championship. And so uh, they helped build the program with me, and, and we had a little bit of success. Um, but, yeah, that was kind of what I thought I hit my peak right then and there you know I was in my mid-20s and doing what I thought I wanted to be doing and really enjoyed it did they ever fix the players boxes in lacrosse uh, you as know, I recall that was very interesting yeah it was a low bench and then a high bench yeah yeah and that's so, where the coach had to be I always felt like I was going to fall right on the rink yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know like I when when I started here, I would go up there and recruit every now and then because there'd be a girl on a boys program. And uh, I I know they had changed Green Island Ice Arena, but I don't know if the benches got changed. Okay. <laughs> Did you ever t- take the opportunity uh, from player slash coach to throw on the stripes at all and referee any games? I've never, you know, I, I have some good friends that are officials now and uh, – one of the gentlemen that uh, I coached with uh, at St. Mary's University, uh, he's now an official in our league. Uh, so, um, but I've never put that on. I, again, I have a lot of respect for him. It's not an easy job, uh, especially at the youth level and AAA level. But I think uh, the higher they go, I think you know the coaches have a lot more respect for what they're doing out there. So I've heard you mention St. Mary's a couple of times. You know, your son spent some time there, and uh, I believe you actually spent some time there as a, as a student too, didn't you? Yeah, I did my while well, I was your teaching. Master's degree, yeah, yeah. yeah. As as I was doing my teaching at La, or at Lacrosse, I worked on my master's program at uh, St. Mary's University. That led to me uh, meeting their women's coach at the time. His wife was the head of our master's program and she shared to me when she found out I had an interest in hockey that he needed an assistant coach. So his name was Jeff Bisner, a uh, great guy, gave me my start at college hockey. Uh, we had some very good teams. He did a great job recruiting. I think if you go back and, and look at St. Mary's record, you know, those times in the late 90s were probably some of the best years they've had in their history on the women's side. And that was due to him and his recruiting and efforts in the early time of women's hockey. Um, he helped me follow my path. You know, we worked together for two years, and then he got hired to be here as the assistant coach. Okay. And I was still doing my master's. Uh, just had Connor was just a newborn. And so I wasn't able to jump to that head coach position. So that's when I bought in Duncan Ryhorchuk to be the head coach, who coached with me at lacrosse. And then he ended up coming being the head coach for my last year at uh, St. Mary's. And now he's an official in our league. So small <laughs> hockey community. <laughs> A lot of connections. Yeah. You've got these friendships with uh, officials, but when they step on the ice with the stripes, is that kind of just the wall kind of go up a little bit and you say, uh, <laughs> we're, depends we're, how good of a game he's calling, JC. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and that leads me to a story. We interviewed a coach here a while ago, well, Karen Bai, uh, okay. you know, former Olympian at, who, uh, who coached uh, women's hockey in Hudson. And, and she said she uh, always knew that there was going to be two bad calls or referee made every game. So she just was ready to set that aside. How about you? I need to take that advice. <laughs> I th- I've gotten better with my age and experience. Uh, uh, I used to be more vocal. Uh, I would say now a couple of times uh, throughout the season, I may leave the game not happy with myself. I should have handled it better. Um I think every the last two or three years, my New Year's resolution, I've reminded Sis, our director of operations, Sis Paulson, I said, 
Help me stick to my New Year's resolution. Just give me a tug if I'm getting too vocal. Uh, How's that working out so far? Uh, the first and third period when I'm standing next to her, it's okay. But then when I go second period and go to the other end of the bench, <laughs> she's like, she'll come down at the end of the period and say, oh, I wish I was standing next to you. So, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we're in a competitive business and uh, – the biggest thing is, you know, when you think the safety of your players was a concern and they didn't oh, see yeah. it, yeah. Uh, that's kind of the thing that might set me off the most. Yeah, understandable. Totally understandable. Very understandable. How did you make the jump from high school to collegiate? Yeah, just uh, working on my master's at St. Mary's. I got uh, – that's where I met Jeff Visner. Um, he, again, he – we worked together for two years, and then he got the assistant job here. So I stayed up in uh, lacrosse and had to, one more year left of my master's. And he was only here for a year, and then he got the head job at Mankato. Okay. Um, and go. so when he left, he's like, hey, my assistant at St. Mary's is, you know, Madison, went to school down there. Um, he's young. He likes to recruit. He does a good job, you know. So uh, Trina Bourget was the head co coach at the time, and uh, she interviewed me a couple of times. And uh, just uh, so August of 2001, I got hired to come down here. So you've coached both boys and girls in hockey and soccer. So what are some of the differences and some of the similarities between the two sexes? Uh, I think just there's a lot more similarities than what people think than differences. Obviously, the size and strength is the difference, but when you look at preparation, you look at determination, uh, the passion for the game, all that stuff is very similar. Um, you know, difference between coaching, I would say, high school and college is the biggest difference. You know, no matter what the sex of the player, um, they would – you know, in high school, they have a little bit more of attitude and, and in college, you know, they want to get better and they want to learn. So, uh, you know, they take what you're saying and uh, try to implement it in their game. So um, but other than, you know, you know, a few rule differences and obviously the speed and the size of the men compared to the women, I think, you know, what drives them is the same. You know, they want to be make the big saves in the big game. They want to score the big goals in the big game. But, and so I just really appreciate and admire the passion and the discipline they have as college athletes. Nice. Going to give a quick shout out to a couple of our sponsors. Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine has been committed to the health care needs of patients in western Wisconsin since 1954. The orthopedic surgeons and athletic trainers serve Mary, or excuse me, very, uh, many area schools. <laughs> Holy buckets, I got the mumbles today. And Dooley's Pub has been an Eau Claire's home for hockey and all sports fans since 2005. Dooley's Pub is a proud booster of the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire and local high schools. Dooley's is located on historic Water Street, providing excellent food and service. So, Coach, you've been a coach with the women's program here at Wisconsin for 18 years, but you left in 2009, and then you came back in 2011. Can you tell us a little bit of background on what happened there? Yeah, um, I remember... Uh seeing Gordy Stafford, who is the uh, prep coach for the women's program at Shattuck St. Mary's back in 2006 men's national championship. His son, Drew, played for North Dakota at the time. And so we had a conversation down there and I kind of made a comment like, hey, I'd really like to have your job at some point in my career. And then uh, <laughs> okay. a few years, you know, a few years after that, he had an opening for the U16 team. And uh I wanted to get some head coaching experience. Um, it also worked out where they offered my wife a job as the school psychologist and mm -hmm. director of uh, health services there. Uh, my oldest son, Connor, was going into eighth grade. Um, and so we just thought it would be a nice fit where I wouldn't have to be on the road recruiting so much, spend a little bit more time at home and, uh, you know, give them an opportunity to, you know, play at a premier spot like Shattuck St. Mary's and uh, wasn't a very easy decision. I remember uh, talking with Mark and our AD at the time, Coach Johnson, and, um, you know, they were doing what they felt like they could do to help me stay, to keep me to stay here. But eventually it just came down to a family decision and uh, decided to make that change. And hopefully it helped professionally getting that head coaching experience too. Sure. 
Absolutely. And obviously you must have left Wisconsin on good terms because you returned. Yeah. I, yeah. I stayed in contact. Um, I was fortunate enough, you know, to be under Mark for, you know, eight, nine years before I left. Uh, Gordy Stafford was a great mentor too. And, and some of the men coaches there, Tom Ward, it was a great like hockey environment just to learn. Uh, there were some things from the prep school that I didn't necessarily enjoy as much, right? It wasn't hockey 24 seven. I was an advisor for grade 10, about a dozen grade 10 students. I worked in the admissions office. I was recruiting bioscience kids, figure skaters, soccer players. And, uh, you got a few balls in the air. Yeah. And we had, you know, we were dorm parents to grade eight and grade nine boys. Uh, my wife, you know, she loves being a mother. And so our door was always open and, you know, (laughs) fortunate enough to meet, you know, some kids at that time that were very good players. And, uh, uh, my wife still stays in contact. Obviously she would make the cookies and the, the smoothies and (laughs) things like that. But, you know, and my children loved it, you know, they, they had 50 some new brothers, you know, that were just a hallway door away from us. So. Uh, it was a great experience for them, but I wanted to do hockey. You know, I wanted to do hockey and, and try to avoid those other things. So uh, at that time, Tracy Cornell decided to get out of coaching. So Mark called me and asked if I would consider coming back. Uh, we never sold our house. We always kept our house down here. Uh, so we would come back every summer. And so the hard part was, you know, the boys stayed up there and the wife stayed up there and oh. I came back. And so, um, but yeah, I was, it was a good choice for me to come back. I was named associate head coach at that time. And, uh, it just, you know, it's just hockey here. And so I really appreciate that part of it. So you keep mentioning Mark Johnson. So for our listeners, can you give us a little background on Mark Johnson? <laughs> Do I need to? I think well, <laughs> I, you don't need to for our sake, yeah, but you know okay. there may be somebody who's been in living under a rock. Out yeah, there I mean they, you they go may back, learn something from. Yeah, from him. You, you go back to you know when I'm Mark's ten years older than me, so you know when I was eight, he was eighteen. You know he was a freshman for the Badgers. I went to his dad's hockey camps. Um, and, uh, you know, we just enjoyed growing up watching the Johnson hockey family. And, um, you know, he had a great career at Memorial High School. I think he still has the records for the state of Wisconsin with points scored or goals scored in a season. And that was back when they only played 18 games. Freshmen weren't allowed to play on varsity back then. So, <laughs> you know, his accolades go way back to high school. Um From there, he had a very good career at Wisconsin, you know, winning Rookie of the Year in the NCAAs, uh, scoring records, um, winning a national championship with his dad as his coach. Um, And then, obviously, from there, he went on to the 1980 uh, Miracle Team for the USA Olympics in Lake Placid, beating Russia, beating Finland to win the gold medal. And uh, he's had a very successful career coaching, whether it's been at high school uh, the pros, uh, men's college and women's college. You mentioned the 10 year difference between you and him. Do you ever get a chance to little jab him a little bit about being an old man on the ice rink and <laughs> maybe skate a circle or two around him a little bit? You got to remember who his boss is, JC. <laughs> uh, he still can skate circles around me. Uh, so I don't, I don't try to, uh, poke the bear at all, you know. There you go. Yeah, yeah. If he every now and then he'll go down and still snipe one in the upper corner, and uh, we're both uh, trying to be a little bit more careful of not going down. And you know, the girls are getting faster, and the shots are getting harder. And uh, but uh, no, he's still in great shape, and uh, uh, he can still skate really well. <laughs> you know that you mentioned the girls are getting better and faster. As you look at women's college right now and the athletes that are on the ice, at your pace now, are you able to keep up to them as a coach right now? You know, or would you have been able to keep up to them when you were in high school? Yeah, I I mean, I think... um... You know, every now and then, you know, like when Mark coached the 2010 Olympic team, he would take that team like down to play the Shattuck 16 boys and they would be pretty competitive games. Okay. Um, 
you know, and those were girls and their women in their mid twenties and things like that playing against 16 year old boys. And, um, I mean, we're in this because, you know, we're very competitive people. And so we feel like we can still, uh, stay up with it. I think, uh, you know, the players, when you're out recruiting, they want to see your passion as well and see your determination. And, and, you know, our goal is always to put a competitive team out on the ice that's going to, you know, compete for WCHA titles and hopefully NCAA titles. So uh, you're in your second stint now with the Badgers, now as the associate head coach. So what do you feel are the, the qualities that you bring to the program? Um. One thing about our staff is, you know, we're all educators. Uh, Mark Johnson and Jackie Crum, our other assistant coach, myself, you know, I was an elementary ed major. They were kinesiology majors. And so we really use that education uh, background to help develop our players, to help teach the game. Um, I think, you know, if you look at all the staffs in NCAA Division I women's hockey, we've been together the longest. My first year here, Jackie was a freshman. So I've known her since 2001. Um, You know, Mark and I have been together for most of the part for, you know, 16 years besides those two years. And I was gone and he was gone for the Olympics that one year. And so, you know, we're just a very genuine staff. And I think families appreciate that. and the fact that, you know, we've had a good track record. Uh, we've helped develop players. We've put players, you know, on national stage with either USA or Canada. Um, so I think we are all kind of similar in a lot of ways. And uh, the big thing with Jackie and myself is, you know, we're the ones communicating a lot with the families and we earn their trust. And uh, that goes a, lot, a long way. Absolutely it does. That's yeah, well, sure. they send their daughters here. You know, they, they need to know that uh, their daughters are being looked after and cared for. So yep, that's yep, a yep. huge responsibility you guys have. Let's talk about your rivals. Badger hockey is uh, synonymous with championships. So when your team is getting ready to play a game, which teams or teams do they get most fired up about to play? Yeah, I mean, it's always been the border rivalry with uh, Minnesota. Uh, that mm-hmm. has gone back to since, you know, 2001 um also from you know minnesota duluth won a lot of the early ncaa national tournament so those were always competitive series too and then most recently ohio state has uh gained got to the top and uh so those are probably our three biggest ones but it's like we have to get up for every weekend Uh, i think our league is the strongest league that's in the country uh, the wcha women's league and so um we have four teams right now in the top eight uh and then five teams in the top 15 so this weekend st cloud's coming down here this is the first time they've been ranked for in the top 20 for you know a number of years so five out of the eight teams are very competitive and and i would say uh mankato's had a lot of great improvement also you got to play the best to be the best at times. Yeah, that's yep, true. yep. And it makes it makes the I I think when you look at the track record of WCHA teams and the number of NCAA championships we have, our league helps us prepare for the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. We've uh, interviewed players, coaches from Mankato and Minnesota, and. Uh, they talk about you in the same way you're talking about them. So I, yep. I think it's a mutual respect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good point, JC. And a lot of those girls, too, like are teammates on the national program. So, sure. again, it, it, it's fast. And, and uh, you know, you talk about, you know, the players in the league this year. I think it's probably the top college year ever for women's hockey because of covid you have girls that are doing their fifth years, mm-hmm. so they would have moved on. It's a non-Olympic year, so last year there was girls that were centralized with USA and Canada. They're back, so now you have an extra class with the Olympian-style players. So it is a very deep, challenging league. Uh, number of teams, Minnesota, I think, has nine fifth-year players. Ohio State you know, has six. I think uh, uh, Duluth has six or seven. 
you know, and so those girls would typically be gone by now. Right. And so it's a very deep league, and the same is true for some of the teams out east. So in your 18 years, what would you say the the skill level or what, what type of skill do you think the gals are developing more and more now from the time you started in 2001 to what you see now? Um, it's definitely a faster game. It's a more skilled game. Uh, you know, our four lines nowadays, you know, probably they would have been our third, fourth lines would have been first lines back, you know, in 2001. Yeah. Sure. Um, so the quality and the depth of players is much larger, uh, which can be challenging because, you know, you're taking players that are probably their best player on their U18 team or their high school team, and you have to get them to buy in a role that, you know, their fourth line now for maybe their freshman or sophomore year. So there's a challenge with that, but the, the quality of player is a lot deeper, uh, the spe- you know, back then, you know, even 10 years ago, like with a Brianna Decker or Hillary Knight, you know, you would have one, two, three of those on a team. And, and now it's, uh, you know, you got a couple lines of those. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go to where do you find those players? Where are you recruiting? You know, uh, I know like in, you know, some sports, some programs, they have a niche. And we just try to find the best players in North America. If you look at our roster, we have girls from New York, California, you know, f- three or four provinces from Canada, um, you know, but, uh, you know, generally, you know, there's uh, there's U19 program in in Canada that has a number of teams that we go watch. Minnesota high school is really good. Oh, sure. You know, out east, you have the prep schools and then kind of in the Midwest, Michigan, Pennsylvania, you know, you have the tier one AAA programs like the Chicago Mission, the Madison Capitals, Little Caesars, the Pen- Pittsburgh Penguins Elite. And and so we're hitting a number of different tournaments throughout this year. And uh, we just try to identify some of the, you know, who are the top program or who are the top players in each class and try to get them in here for a visit. All right. We're going to take another minute for our sponsors. Kelly Heating and Electric are dedicated to serving their customers' heating and electrical needs efficiently. They have been named one of Bryant's Medal of Excellence winners. They provide expert advice from a friendly staff that can provide you with the knowledge you need to make the best decisions on your electrical heating or air conditioning project. And also Computer Recovery Associates. They specialize in removing, monetizing, and recycling computer hardware from large data centers. Whether you're looking to relocate repurpose, sell, or recycle, Computer Recovery Associates can help. Check them out at computerrecoveryassociates.com. So, Coach, let's get back to the where you find your players. So what type of uh, scouting network do you have? I'm sure you and the other assistant coach aren't the ones that are going out and watching all these games. You must have other regional scouts that kind no. of feed the information to you? No, we, we, we're not allowed to do that. Actually, the NCA just came out where we can hire a, fourth, a third assistant. Okay. So I don't know. You know, that's going to be up to the universities if they're going to do that, obviously. And we're not the only sport. You know, that's happened to most of the D1 sports. And so that's a big budget, you know, item that if they hire a new coach for all their programs, you know. So, uh, no, it, it's – Jackie, I, Mark, hitting the road, going to these tournaments that are pretty consistent every year, being held kind of the same time each year, and uh, really getting to know, like, uh, the directors of the programs. You know, um, there are some spring and summer programs that go on that we try to get to their camps and uh, different, you know, tournaments and things that they host, too, but... We don't have uh, anyone that we can pay or, you know, go out on the road for us. They have wow. to. They okay. have to be a part of our program. They have to pass the NCA recruiting test, um, and uh, they have to be one of our counted coaches. So maybe some programs will add a fourth coach, but right now it's just three for most programs. Wow! If uh, you're a young lady who's looking to go to play D1 hockey. What does that young lady need to do to catch your attention? Um, I mean, we look at for a number of qualities uh, that help us 
identify and then determine if we need to see them a second, third, fourth time or send a different coach to go watch them the next time. Uh, one is competitiveness. How do they react uh, when they have the puck and they're engaged in a battle? How do they react if they lose the battle? Do they want to get the puck back? Um, so that's like the number one key. Uh, the other thing would be skating. You know, are they uh, agility, athletic skaters, good speed? Um, and then we kind of look for uh, maybe some qualities that doesn't really require a lot of skill on the ice. We'll look for body language, see how they uh, handle adversity. Uh, maybe if they're having a bad game, sitting on the bench, you know, are their heads down or are they still trying to uplift their teammates? So, and then we get into specific things for, you know, the forward, the defense, and the goalie. So, you know, forwards, if you're, if you're not the quickest player, but you can put the puck in the net, you know, there's always a, <laughs> there's a spot, spot for, for them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but obviously the speed is, you know, we want to be heavy on pucks. We want to get in on the four check. But then you also have to have that puck protection skill, the you know the shooting accuracy and speed of your shot. So we look for that in forwards. Obviously, defensive players, we might look at some skating skill a little bit more. How are their pivots? How are their turns? Their transitions from forward to backwards? How is their one-on-one -on -one play? Uh, Goaltending, we look for you know do they make the saves they need to make? Uh, how are their movements? Uh, whether you know they're going post to post or post to top of crease? Mm -hmm. Are they able to play the puck, stop the puck behind the net? And uh, are they able to make the saves that they need to make? You know, uh, we all understand that, you know, sometimes teams are going to capitalize on rebounds and things like that, but we want goalies to be competitive out on top of the crease, challenging shooters. Um, and so that kind of specifies, you know, the skill that's needed for their position. Well, you've pretty got, got got that down pretty good. Yeah. If you're uh, trying to uh, get a recruit, and that recruit might be looking at the University of Minnesota and is also visiting the Badger uh, Laban Arena, which is absolutely gorgeous here. We can actually see it, folks, from where we're sitting in a beautiful arena. And what is the recruiting process to try and get that person to come here rather than to Minnesota. Yeah. So, uh, again, uh, you can't have any contact with a player with the NCA rules until June 15th after their sophomore year, but you try to form a relationship by either working these camps that they may be at or coaching a spring team that they might be participating on. So you can form a little bit of relationship just so they know who you are and they are. So that kind of happens before that June 15th date. Uh, the other thing you can do prior to that is send them a questionnaire, which kind of tells them Wisconsin's interested. Okay. You know, and other programs are doing this too. So like if they're eighth grade year, freshman year, if we like what we're seeing, we'll send them a player profile, player questionnaire. Um, they can't call us. We can't talk to them, but they can fill that out and it goes into our database. Um and then after June 15th, oh, the other thing you can do prior to June 15th is invite them to your camps if you have any camps going on. So then they get to see your coaching style. And again, during those spring or pre-tournaments and camps, there's no recruiting going on. You can't talk about the University of Wisconsin or our hockey program, but they get to learn a little bit about your character as well and your style of coaching. After June 15th, you can start emailing. You can start having phone conversations. Um and then you try to get them to campus for a visit, either an unofficial visit or an official visit. And it seems like uh, if we can get them on campus, I think our uh, percentage for success is pretty high to get their commitment. But, you know, the other programs are trying to do the same things, too. And, uh, you know, sometimes you want to know where you are in the pecking order, if you're, they're visiting you first or coming to you last <laughs> and, and different things like that. So what, what, what do you prefer? Um, that they only visit here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it would go. be, not, you know, that's what, you know, sometimes we might have that conversation. If you really like this, you know, there's no sense of wasting your time to go visit right, there, right. right? You know, yeah. save that weekend and you can go play with your junior team. So. Well, you kind of answered one question, uh, and that is, 
at what age do you start noticing players? And you mentioned eighth grade. I mean, are you going back that far in, in age groups? Um, in the spring and summer, yeah, there's uh, – I mean, you're just – you know, it's a way to go. And like, for me, I get to coach, like I get to be the head coach and, uh, you know, kind of, so I kind of use it, you know, for my experience at that. But I'd say a lot of times when you see a really good player at like the U14 level, unless size is an issue, they're still pretty good at the U18 level. And so you, you get, these relationships and you uh you see these kids we're at the rinks recruiting they're walking in you know they wave they say hello um but yeah you know there's eighth grade girls that play on minnesota high school teams oh, sure. there's some eighth grade girls that don't play u14s they'll play u16s and so i mean it used to be younger and younger until they changed the rules a couple years ago which i think has benefited everyone especially the high school players and Kids were making decisions about where they were going to college before they knew where they were going to high school. So wow. uh, these were positive rule changes that they put in place to wait until June 15th after their sophomore year. Yeah, absolutely. So, Coach, in your 18 years being here, um, you've seen the, the, the skill level of these women just increase astronomically. Um, not to belabor the point or anything, but... Uh, a lot of times they get uh, compared to, you know, how's the women's game compared to the men's game? Do you see that gap closing at all, or is it just not even something that you even think about? Yeah, we don't really think about it because obviously I think, you know, I don't know firsthand, but I believe that the men's game is evolving too and they're getting better. Yeah. You know, same sort of thing, quality of players, much deeper. Uh, and so, yeah, we don't really get into that uh topic or conversation very often sure. or ever. Okay. You've been involved in numerous uh, national championships with the Badgers and a few runners up. Which of those seasons or which of those times was the most memorable for you? Uh, always the first, right? Uh, the first okay. time, you know, that's your goal. Um, and we saw the progress, you know, uh, coming in in 2001, uh, trying to get your type of player. I kind of look at, you know, being in the GM of the program as I'm out recruiting, what pieces do we need? Uh, our staff has very good conversation when it comes to recruiting. Uh, Mark is excellent in that, you know, he doesn't want us to agree. If we have a difference, let's share it, you know. So, you know, I'll bring up a player, you know, that I like, but Mark and Jackie might not see what I see and, and, we move on and vice versa. They may see someone that I don't like or someone has a different opinion on it. So um, being here in 2001, you know, you look at a lot of like NBA coach or college football coaches and NCAA basketball coaches, and they usually start with a five-year contract, right, so they can build that program. So that's kind of what I was feeling when I came in in 2001. I like to try to get our type of player in work with our other staff members and try to do that, you know, in five, six years. And we were fortunate enough to do that. So the 2006 one was almost, uh, I don't know if we were the best team that year. UNH had a great team. Minnesota helped us out by beating them in the semifinals. And then it's just that nervousness of playing the Gophers, right? And we knew we were better than them that year, but it was in Mariucci. So that helped make it even better. Um, and so the first one definitely is, uh, one that I'll remember for a while. God, it's cool to be able to look back and say the first one, because you have multiples. I yeah. mean, a lot of guys don't even have any, so that's, that's quite a feather in your cap. And I, and I would say the second would be 2021, just dealing with the COVID from the years. Oh, yeah. Um, the, there was no structure to the season. You'd be going, get ready for a game. It would get canceled. Um, and so it was just a hard season to manage and to get to the end of that finish line and be on top. It was re very rewarding. Well, you guys had to maneuver so many things oh, during that every, year. Everybody, you know, yeah. you go in there and then, then a kid tests positive and then you have contact tracing, how many guys were connected to him. So they're out. It's yeah, yeah. it was, it must've been tough and it was tough for everybody. So. Yeah. yeah. In every sport too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We've talked a little bit about coaching, a lot about recruiting, uh, 
about you being on opposite ends of the bench so Sis Paulson can keep you under control. But <laughs> when you're on the bench, what are you looking for? What are your duties? Uh, I work with the defense uh, on the bench, so I, I get the next pairings ready to go out. Um, first thing I do is, you know, we show scout video during the week. Uh, I break down our opponents, so this week we're playing St. Cloud, so I'll spend, uh, you know, it takes a number of hours to break down a couple games, and so then I'll spend, try to break that down into 10 minutes and, and show our team on yesterday, on day before our games, I'll show them a few of their face-off plays, I'll show them what their power play looks like, I'll show them what their penalty kill looks like, I'll show what their forecheck looks like. And uh, if they have any uh, players that have extreme skill that like to have a tendency on a certain move, I'll show some of those. Um, so then, you know, when I'm during the game and the game starts, you know, I, I help the D try to identify what four check they're running. You know, if it's the same one that I showed in video, that's great, but sometimes they'll change it up. So that helps the D realize, you know, how we can break out better. Okay, sure. Um, it's a little... Not easier, but there's more strategy when you're at home because you get last change. So I'm constantly looking down over at the other bench to see what forwards they have up, who I think is jumping on the ice. So if there's not a whistle, I want to be able to match them. So, you know, if they have their first line out, I want to make sure I have, you know, our second, or first or second pair of D up. I'm doing that. Um, trying to stay positive, trying to stay encouraging, you know, because they're going to make mistakes and, uh, a lot of players are their worst critics, so uh, you don't want to break them down. You want to try and keep them upbeat and get focused on the next shift because that's what's important. Do you have a player that has surprised you the most this year on the team? Um, I guess for, uh, you know, we had the three girls that got centralized last year, and they came back. You know, Natalie Bookbinder on defense, Lacey Eden, and Britta Curl were with the USA national team. They ended up getting cut just before Christmas. So they redshirted all last year. So they're nice to have back. Uh, obviously, they bring a lot of depth and talent. Um, I think like a returning player, uh, I think Casey O'Brien has taken a jump in her game as far as using her speed to attack the scoring area to get inside the face-off dots, drive to the net. Uh, we were fortunate enough to pick up a fifth-year Jess Comfort uh, from Boston University. Oh, nice. Yep, and, and she's a special player. But looking at our freshmen, you know, I'm just, you know, a lot of our freshmen came from the USA U18 team this year, and they've all put up really good numbers. And, and – you know, the, it's it's hard for them because they're playing against a lot of fifth years. So it's kind of like in the men's side where you bring in the one and done player, but they're going against some other teams that may not have the skill level, but they're twenty four year old seniors. Yeah, sure. And so we have some true freshmen playing, you know, against uh, fifth year players that are twenty three, twenty four years old. And so all the freshmen have really done a great job. Um, Layla Edwards, Kirsten Sims, and uh, Claire Enright at forward. Uh, they've really added some depth. They're playing special teams, power play, penalty kill. And then um, Vivian Jungles on defense, very skilled player. Uh, as she ends up getting stronger, uh, she's going to be someone special to watch. So, Coach, part of being a, one of the top teams in the nation every year means that you have many players selected to their country's Olympic teams. Your players mainly represent the United States and Canada. So during Olympic years, who do you root for when these teams play each other? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're an American, but still. Yeah, yeah. Canadian no. girls are your girls too. Yeah, I, you know, I'll, I'll text, you know, uh, we are fortunate enough, I think, to have five on Canada this year. So I would uh, text them in a group thing, wishing them the best of luck. And, and then I would have a separate text with the U.S. players on it and, Give them the same message. Uh, <laughs> uh, and they're great friends, you know, too, because sure. some yeah. of them were teammates here at the same time, and they'll come back and train and skate and practice sometimes. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, you just can tell uh, right now Canada has the swag, you know, and, and um, 
I don't know if it's the way the, the national level is being run, but they just have that swag, and somehow the U.S. has to figure a way to just knock them off the throne. Yeah. And then, like anything, they'll they'll figure it out, and then they'll have a run for two or three years, yeah. and then Seesaw Canada, battle. Yeah, yep. Canada will yep. figure it out. But we're very fortunate that, you know, to come in here. The NHL network has done a great job of, uh, you know, not only playing the Olympic games and stuff, but also playing the U18 world championships this past season where we had a number of players playing for Canada and the U S on that. That's nice. What does the future hold for coach cook? Um, I'm looking forward to staying here. Uh, I don't know, uh, how long coach Johnson's saying, but obviously I would love to stay here and, and continue to build the program and build what he's done. Um, if he ends up staying here, 10 more years and maybe we go out together you know i'd be more than happy to do that um like i said coming to the rink every day being planning practice with jackie and coach johnson um talking with personal issues with them you know they're they're my family that's not my house so um we have a great support staff as far as sis paulson our director of operations AJ Harrison, uh, our communication director, director uh, Steph Arndt, our uh, athletic trainer, and then Eric Steffen, who's our administrative assistant, and Paul Eva Lucas, who's our strength coach. We really have good people in place that are very good at their part of their job, and it makes coming here every day enjoyable. Coach, I got to tell you, yeah, this has been fun. fun. Yeah, that was appreciate the time that you spent with us and. Uh, we wish you the best with your program. Not that you need a whole lot of luck. I mean, you guys are are just dominating, you know, for years. And obviously, it's due to people like you who've got, you know, you can tell you've got a yeah, passion for got, this game. They got the program dialed in. 15 national championship appearances, NCAA tournament appearances. You know, that, that doesn't happen by accident. Yeah, you know, when you say that, I have never thought about that number before you know you it's think about number. the times you won but and that's not a 18 long years of time. Yeah, yeah 18 years 50 <laughs> tournaments that's uh that's pretty special thanks for yeah bringing that to yeah, my no attention. problem <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pump right. your tires a little bit here yeah, coach thank you uh all right moog should hey, we wrap her up absolutely hey Thanks again, Coach Cook. We appreciate your time and, uh, and comments all day today. And uh, also a huge thank you to our audience. Special thank you to our sponsors for this episode. Kelly Heating and Electric, Computer Recovery Associates, Dooley's Pub, and Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. And folks, please follow us on Instagram and Twitter and visit us on our website at thebreakoutsessions.com. And as always, until our next episode, remember, stay on your inside edges.